All right, I can actually paint and do this. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the video, and I'm not going to cut it out, there is a uh, kind of a tannish color bar at the bottom. All right, now believe it or not, that's a part of a, that's a flap to a cardboard box. All right, cardboard box, hilarious, right? All right, you should be able to see whatever I'm currently painting at the time. Uh, you can see my palette of, you know, many, many moons past. All right, and, oh man, hmm. still wiping sleep out of my eyes. It's almost noon, still wiping sleep out. And that's gonna happen. Well, any day anyway, all right. Well, I'm still painting the red scorpions. Um, I wanted to have the trim done by now, the yellow trim. Now, you'll notice, all right, I'm gonna bring this guy out. You'll notice that like the bar looks really nice on the head. Um, the shoulder pads, they're a little messy, but for the most part, it's a nice solid color, okay, of the yellow. See that all the way around. All right, underneath, okay. The thing is though, you know, you can get paints where you don't have to do like a hundred layers of yellow to hope for the best. And this took quite a few, quite a few layers to achieve that. The thing is, until you get the chance to achieve that, you have layers that, you know, are uneven. It's not solid, solid you know, who knows it may work out to your advantage that they aren't completely solid but like sometimes you just want to throw on an extra couple of coats just to be sure and you can see through like all of these that you know it's not solid there I mean the head the bar is almost done so that's pretty all right but you know you can see the big contrast compared to the one guy that I didn't start on. And that happens. That happens. I was actually getting extremely tired, and there's one thing you don't want to do. Paint while you're sleepy. All right? People tell you, don't paint while you're, you know, under the influence. And sleep is an influence you don't want to be under for this. Okay? Now, something that can help with layers like this is if you've let your paint sit for a little bit, it'll start to coagulate. Yes, it's the same word used for, for blood, except for paint and yellow, okay? And when that happens, it should cover a little bit easier because it's more solid. Now, some people will also tell you you need to get, we'll use Games Workshop for this one, a... Uh, a base paint. Okay, well a base paint already has the chemicals and stuff necessary to not have to worry about that. Now, you can also spot that my brush is having some separation issues with itself. Brand new brush doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best brush. And again, you can see that there's going to be like some lines. There's a definite like change in the way this is painted. It took me a while to come up with the cardboard box idea. But as for the painting, you know, just just take your time. There's no reason to rush. You know, if you uh, if you have a painting competition you were doing. Or like these guys, I was painting up. I'm painting them up for a league, and the league ends in like seven days. Well, I'm not expecting to to get the world's best paint job for the seven days. But as well, when it comes to doing these layers, put a little paint on. Go paint another part of the model. We have shoulder pads here for a reason. And you don't have to glob it on, just 
one layer at a time. Try to see if you can't hit the spots where, you know, the paint didn't quite hit the last time. Now, for whatever reason, and you can see it here, I went over this area, but it picked up on one corner and the other corner and not in the center. You know, and the only way to really tackle that is to make sure that you put a little paint in that center. Now you may be worried about globules of paint and yeah sure you can get kind of like a texturing going on the moment you're getting too much paint on the model but sometimes you're just not going to get like something that's super thin and super even. Can you achieve it? Sure. Some people use spray cans, some people use are just really good with their brush you know, and, you know, I could have spray painted this guy yellow and it would have taken care of it. But, I mean, imagine imagine the eyesore from that one. I'm not saying yellow is a bad color. I'm just saying, like, it'd be really bright and white's already almost too bright for me to paint on. So don't hurt yourself. Now, because I'm not looking at like where the camera and stuff's pointing, hopefully I've got it at about the right angle so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Some, some paint artists will just be like, we're doing this color. They'll apply a little bit and then like, they'll be like, flash forward. This is done. Yeah, but like, what did you do? Did you follow the same technique you were saying you were following? Like, I'm not calling anybody out. Like, a lot of people do time lapses because people don't want to sit there for 20 minutes watching a video. Well, they're sitting there for 20 minutes because they do want to watch the video. It's a question of whether or not they want to stand there and sit there and watch a video for 40 minutes. I tell you, there are people I could sit and watch for 40 minutes. How long was an episode with Bob Ross? What was that, like a half an hour? Hour? Or maybe it was just two episodes back to back. But heck, I could sit there and watch Bob Ross all day. So you do you. You decide how you want to do these things. And again, if you've already noticed that one area is like really well covered, you don't have to go over it. Just even things up around it. Now thought about telling a story about, you know, the Red Scorpions, how they fought in the Anfelian Project against, like, Tyranids, um, how they fought in the Badab War, you know, how they fought in uh, Vrax, but, I mean, you could look up a thousand different videos, probably, on those subjects. But something that you can still do, like, all right, well, I'm painting these guys up to be red scorpions. Decals are on the way to help me make them red scorpions. But most Space Marine chapters have ten companies, and only maybe two or three are sent out at a time. Yellow is actually a signifier of a specific company uh, if you're completely following uh, codex, you know, traditions. But Red Scorpions just use yellow in general. They usually use squad markings on the shoulder pads, you know, and that'll tell them who's like the higher ranking officer. The other chapters don't need to know what's going on. Because they may have their own traditions. But always remember, you can make your, your, your chapter your own when it comes to anything. You're, you know, if you got a hive fleet, you know, you could paint them all up to look like Littlefoot from the Land Before Time. You know, you could paint them up to be Jurassic Park. Or a very common one is the, the uh, Xeno species from the Aliens. 
movies and stuff like that. And I'm sure there's videos out there of people having done that. I suggest with the alien, though, if you go that route, look into gloss. Because they are super sleek and shiny. But again, always take your time. There's no reason to hurry. No reason at all. Like I, I was going to, as a part of like telling you that you can make your own chapter up and stuff like that, just remember, I think one of your cousins made, uh, made a Space Green chapter and like, I don't remember if he actually like, oh, what, what would be the word for that? I don't know if he decided on names for his characters, but I believe they were like the Brass Panthers or something like that. And he, he went with a very, you know, heavy color of brass over like the whole model. Almost reminded me of the, of, of a traitor legion but that's the thing. He can do whatever he wants. I may be able to call out a traitor legion for, you know, being the color scheme of something, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he can't use it. Heck, you can paint up your entire chapter, you know, or whatever your army is to look like Kirby. Give them all vacuums for weapons. I don't know where you'd find a lot like that unless you like found somebody online or whatever printing vacuum cleaners. All your tanks look like Roombas, that'd be hilarious. I'd play against that. Heck, I'd play that army. No, I don't have files for that sort of thing. But that wouldn't that wouldn't stop me if I had the the money and time to do the prints. Now, one of the things you can't really see right now because my fingers and such are in the way, all right, there's parts of the model, and normally I would paint models in pieces, but these are snap togethers, and before I realized what, what I was doing, uh, because these are a part of the Leviathan box set, I had glued them together. I didn't think about it ahead of time. Well, I also didn't know that I was going to be playing in a league. Uh, figured these guys might sit on my shelf and collect dust and then go from there. But now, now I'm painting them. But I'm just trying to get some of those hard to reach spots, even with a brush, which is one of the reasons why I, if I have to get to a spot like that, reasons for some of the uh, yellow getting on like the black here, yellow getting on the gray is because I'm trying to get to those spots and it's really hard, you know, because you got to position your brush just right. And unfortunately, if you shake like I do, and believe me, you know, shaking runs in the painters of the family. Uh, you just end up getting it all over the place. Now you can see that the yellow on the bar up here it's becoming a lot more even in terms of color. That's because we we do a layer, let it dry, come back to do another layer. And you know, you can usually look and see if it's dry. Some of the spots, like I'm not too worried about on like the shoulder pads and such, just because discoloration is going to be something that you may encounter on the field of battle okay between between weather and battlefield conditions nothing gold can stay nothing gold and remember 
remember things like that. You could end up, you know, drilling in bullet holes. You know, they don't necessarily have to be bullets, you know, lasers, so on and so forth. So I like the way that looks now. Well, maybe, maybe not back there on the back. But that's why I can look over the model. But the rest of it looks fine. Now, your chapter, you could say your chapter's like right off the ship. They just got there, so their stuff would look like they just came out of the local car wash, right? And they'll be, you know, they'll be fine. They'll be looking pretty. They'll be parade ready. And yes, Space Marines do go on parade. It is very common. Especially in the, uh, like on the planets that they've just either helped or conquered uh, their home planets. A lot of them will do parades there. Because it's a good reminder to show the people that, yes, we are there and we are in great numbers. Because they'll bring out the tanks, everything. All right. Now, I've still got this one last guy to do the yellow on, so that's definitely something we're about to do. And yes, I have a drink. Ugh. If I edit any part of the video, it's going to be that. Mm. Tasty. But now it's still not. It's gone. You know, boo-hoo to me. Oh, man. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, shouldn't be anywhere close to, to one yet. All right. Now I like starting on one shoulder pad, move to here, go to the other shoulder pad. And again, when you're starting off, just find yourself a good starting point. Now, am I expecting this first coat to do the whole job? No. We just had a conversation about how, how, you, how much you gotta go back over things. And you can already see it's like some paint likes to bunch up. Some paint doesn't, and you can see my brush. Well, hopefully you can see my brush. It's, uh, it decided to fray once again. I, I, and I just cleaned it. Like, I, I used to think that, uh, you know, using a little bit of paint is a lot like glue. And that's true in, in some instances, that paint can be a lot like glue. Like at work, I, I work at uh, a local grocery store. And depending on like how they did things, they like more recently, there was a section that sold weights. And that's not uncommon to sell something like that, but the part that got me was they painted over the pins that you have to pull out to adjust the racks so you can, you know, make it, make it so that like a new product or a new setup gets all changed out, but somebody thought it'd be a good idea. Let's Let's put paint on a pin. Did it to all of them, really, but only one of them actually like worked like glue. Had to get a crowbar and fix that. I'm not saying you're gonna need a crowbar to fix your models. And who knows, you might actually find a model that has a crowbar. That'd be pretty neat. There used to be a Hero click model. I don't know if it's still around or not. The guy was called the Wrecker. He was 
I think purple and green. And uh, I don't know. Some I don't. I never looked into it, but somebody told me he he got all of his superpower. He had superpowers, but they only worked because his mind prohibited him from using them unless he had a crowbar in his hands because he believed that his crowbar gave him his superpowers. And you know what? I bet if I had a crowbar in hand and all of a sudden I was capable of throwing a car, I, I would probably think the same thing. There's one for you for the comments section. Well, what would you, what would you call yourself or me if we had a specific object, and uh, you know it gave you super you thought it gave you superpowers? See, now this is something that I I didn't think about while I was doing this. There's some of these spots on here that. It could have been the molding process when they were making them, but some of them, like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's like, it's like the uh, shoulder pad has like a cut in it. And I don't recall that being a spot where you have to worry about anything like that. But then also over here, it's like it's raised up, but then like the top is down. And that, I don't know what's up with that. See, I already got yellow over here on this. Now, can I wipe it off? Not really. I got a little bit, but it'll be fine. Oh, now I see what it is. I see what it is here. I don't think it's the same over there for reasoning, but it's where the model, the model comes together. I don't know that I can push that in any further because I know I used glue. Yeah, maybe I can fix it. But at the same time, will I remember to fix it? Is anybody else going to notice? Now what you can do is if you, you pick up on these things while you're putting them together, you can sand it down. Like if you don't, if you know you can't really like take it apart or anything like that, sand it down. You know, that way it's in line with something else. Unless you know for a fact that it's not supposed to be like that, or maybe it is, you know. I mean, you could ju you could go just as far to be like, dude got hit with a shovel. Nothing works right anymore. But some more paint over here. Again, I don't want to overload it. Just enough to get a good start on that coat. All right, and now we're gonna move on to the helmet while all that gets a little bit of drying. And again, take it slow, no need to go fast. Use the paint on your brush. If you feel like you gotta go fast, put on a blue shirt, call yourself Sonic. I believe I've seen him in uh, classic like Renaissance art, you know, clothing with a paintbrush and palette. Of course, that could have just been him making fun of Dr. Robotnik. Take her slow. Now there's not as much bar on the head. And you notice I'm going all the way over here, but I'm stopping at a point. I don't want the whole helmet to be yellow. Uh, and some details will somewhat transfer on into another part of model and you got to be careful about that sort of thing I 
Now you don't have to paint like the bar and all that stuff on a model. You don't have to. It can all be one color. Blue, black, green, whatever you want it to be. And depending on like what the, if you want to go codex for a space marine, when I say codex, they have a, uh, they have a book that they follow. And again, some of them go full by the book, some of them don't. I'm just trying to get these, uh, there's a little bit of side type detail, it's small and it's easy to kind of paint over. But yeah, the codex will tell you if your helmet needs to be white or red, or if you can still have a solid color. And regardless of what you see on models, it is always recommended that you wear your helmet, all right? I blame a character who, who dies on the field way too early when I play any game, fantasy, you know, 40K, d and If I were to draw up every single one of my characters in D&D, if the armor comes with a helmet, I'm wearing it. Now if we're in a if we're at a tavern or my character's sleeping and he's not wearing his armor, well then he's not wearing his helmet. But once he's done with breakfast until it's time for lunch, he's wearing his helmet. There are DM there are dungeon masters out there that are just like, oh no. You just got hit by this, and you're not wearing your helmet. And I go, is it after breakfast? Yeah. Are we eating lunch? No. Then I got my helmet on. Part of my character's background. Watched a guy probably get his head taken off by an ogre. And there's a chance that the helmet could have saved his life. Now, if you want... I've been reading some story, uh, not reading, but there's these videos of this uh, old dude on YouTube who was, uh, he was the flamethrower guy. And he tells, he, he's telling stories about his time at Iwo Jima. All right. It was a, it was a bad time, you know, for everyone. Especially if you're on the other end of a flamethrower. Thing is, though, he's told stories where, you know, a person didn't get all the way out of a, uh, like, foxhole to dodge a, you know, a grenade that got tossed. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, it sucks. Dude lost his foot. But hey, the good news is, he got to go home, he was still alive, but there was a guy who took his helmet off when he should have kept it on. Yeah, he ain't with us, he ain't with us anymore. And not because of old age. So, I'm not saying you have to take everything seriously. There's a fantasy aspect to some things that just say, hey, do what you want to do. Your aunt, most of your anime characters don't wear helmets unless they're trying to remain in disguise or they're a side character. Got to have that spiky hair. And these days, you know, they, they're, they're changing the color, but it used to be everybody had to, you know, if they were important, they had some fancy color hair. I'm seeing more and more these days where it ain't fancy. 
They just, uh, well, it ain't fancy. And like I said with the paint, as it gets thicker from drying on my palette, it's covering a whole lot easier than it did when I first mixed it. Now, do you happen to know like how long that's gonna take? I don't know, time lapse the video. You might notice. But it all also depends on your conditions. Like there's an air conditioning go an air conditioner going at like 70 degrees. There's next to no humidity. But because the air conditioner is going, not only is it cold, which makes everything cold, including me, but it also comes with with wind. Wind will uh, dry your paint on your palette and your model fairly quickly, which means the coagulation occurs a whole lot faster. And again, I'm sure there's somebody out there to be like, that's not the proper term. Oh no. But you can understand from the words I use what I'm referring to. But yeah, once this yellow is done, I'll actually kind of be happy until I gotta paint more models. Now you can get yourself Averland Sunset for this yellow. I'm using Apple Barrel, and I'm pretty sure it just says yellow. I could be wrong about that. But yeah, this whole video, we call it All About the Yellow. I don't know if that's what I'll actually name it, but you never know. Yeah. See, trying to put too much paint on and it wants to take that paint off. But I need that paint on there. Which is why we move to a different area. So we're going to go back to his helmet. Because it's almost good. Get a nice solid bar going there. Now, one thing you can do, and you may have seen it in pictures you can carry the bar all the way down to the bottom of the helmet in the front. Does that denote any sort of significance? No, it's just a style choice. Just a style choice. Although, since this chapter is supposed to you know, follow the codex, but then you look at a lot of their paint schemes and stuff. It makes me wonder if uh, the writer didn't catch up to the guy who was actually doing the artwork and the painting. Because uh, a lot of that stuff doesn't match up. Alright, we're going to put a little bit right in there. There's that little spot right in there. Now you can also, there, you know, you could follow the method of only paint what you can see, or uh, like the only detail that matters is from the front, what angle you put the model at, and then just make sure that all of the model and the detail looks good from that angle very good for a display piece. As soon as somebody picks it up, moves it, you, they, uh, they kind of notice that like, why isn't the whole thing painted? Well, that's not the style I went with.
but yeah. Painting the, the backpack separately is really helpful if you want to paint your shoulder pads. Of course, one method of painting shoulder pads if they're not snapped together models is to get yourself something like a nail or a toothpick and some sticky substance. I don't suggest bubble gum. Okay, it'd work, but I don't suggest it. Just something else that's sticky. And then put the uh, shoulder pad, you know, put the sticky stuff on like the inside of the shoulder pad and then put the uh, toothpick or nail on it now your grandfather did that and he'd do up like six to eight models at a time and he he would also like just put the shoulder pads on he would just do the heads you know whatever whatever suited him in that moment whenever he was spraying down or he was painting, and he'd use tape, just regular old scotch tape. If you're gonna go the tape route, just make sure that you're using whatever is gonna hold, because it needs to hold the model, the part, the entire time you're painting. check some of my other color areas oh yeah I need right in there because that'll bug me if I know that it's not done people ain't really gonna see it unless they pick up the model and go I'm looking right here I gotta know that it's done so I can judge you if it's not there are some people who just have to go crazy over whether or not something is painted or not I ain't too picky. Like, I probably won't, like, layer that area with, like, a wash or anything. I won't make sure that it's specifically done. Just because it's already out of the way. And we'll likely never see it again. But if you paint it all before you put the model together... And you don't have to worry about that because you'll know it's already done. And you can do the same thing, torsos, just a matter how does it go together this time. Yeah, a lot of this stuff's starting to become very even. But if it's already like shadowed, I'm not going to put too much effort into it. So, like all the stuff that's more towards the light all right so if i'm holding the space marine like this like what's um what's up underneath here not a big deal up here big deal right here you know going this way big deal speaking of big deal go ahead and put some paint there and you'll see i you know by doing that at a weird angle that i'm not really supposed to be painting at uh, i got some paint on the shoulder pad Again, it's no big deal. You can go back and clean it up. All right. But I think this guy's done. Like, I don't really need to put more on there because other things, washes and such, will change that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, stop the video right there. Uh, go ahead and clean my brush and all that. Always remember... You know, however you're cleaning your brushes, get yourself some brush cleaner. I forgot mine at home. Um, make sure your paint brushes, after you get them all dried and stuff like that, that, and some people may argue with, like me, cleaning my brushes like this, but I'm also trying to get the water off of them pretty quickly. Um, but remember to store your paint brushes upright. And if you still got these little doohickeys, 
they can uh, they can help you with keeping your brush nice and together that way if there is fraying they're not fraying far and then I know my paint cup is dirty as uh, well a backed up toilet but the water inside it is clean I've been using both of I've been using this cup about as long as I've been doing the hobby and I've been using this since I got my own my first apartment so you know use what you want to use but remember don't do like I did with this right here make sure your mother approves the uh, the rag or towel you're about to use I didn't and uh, well I caught an earful and with that I'll see you when I hit up the next color. Have a good one.